Hayate, one of the very first characters I ever made in Dynasty Warriors 8 Empires. He's probably up there in the top five, and I have always, always, always been a huge fan of this character of mine, mostly because of his personality, his, uh, his strengths, his weaknesses and all that stuff, and his overall very joyous and very bubbly attitude. He is one of the main five characters of Hybrid's Tale, at least in terms of part one, where he is part of the five main boys, which comprises of Light, Sin, Chen Shun, Hayate, and Suzaku. Hayate kind of leaning towards the second weakest of the characters, but at the same time, he makes up for it in his strength and speed. His speed is ridiculous, and he has also been dubbed because of his amazing footwork. He is known as the Swift Kicking Machine. This boy has been a very big favorite of mine. I have ever since I first made him, I've given him tweaks here and there with his design and everything, but eventually I got I got to where I really did enjoy his design. I actually tweaked him a slight bit before the video as well, giving him a headband now, which I thought was pretty cool. But yeah, so I thought this would I thought um showing off Hayate would be a really cool video for you guys to see so I'm gonna go into battle with him and I'll try to give a little bit of a rundown of what this character is like and everything in terms of personality give you guys a little bit of lore for him and everything so yeah I'm just I'm excited to be able to finally show off this character I hope you all are as well so I guess without further ado let's hop in here into this battle where we are going to have a army of pretty stacked army in my personal opinion because obviously because it's my characters but we got Hayate light Sin, Chen Shun, Suzaku, Shine, and Harna. OG Harna. And I'm uh, I'm looking forward to having this team go up against where all five of them came together, minus the girls. All five of the boys came together and fought alongside one another during the Kaijima Rebellion where it all begins in Hybrid's Tale. So, I guess without further ado, let's hop in here. Alright, here we go. Also, um, quick warning, my voice isn't feeling 100% great today, very stuffed up, did not have a great night's sleep, but nonetheless, I really wanted to be able to show off another character here, so that's what we be doing here today. So yeah, I guess it's time for me to give you a little bit of a small breakdown on this boy here, Hayate, who is a master of the nunchuck and also the swift kicking machine that he truly is, which we'll show off in some moves and musos here soon. Mostly comprises of, uh, well, I think all of it basically comprises of uh, Guan Suo, I think. Because Guan Suo also has a kicking style with his nunchucks as well as with his uh, sabatons, which he has one of the Musos with, I believe. But yeah, so this boy is really cool in terms of, he's basically a uh, best of both worlds in terms of nun being able to use nunchucks and also being able to use his swift, amazing kicking style that he has. Oh, that wasn't good. Hip, hip, hip. I thought this would really fit a Swift character, obviously, this character, because Hayate is very much... Man, it would not be a video with me playing on PlayStation 4 if that battery level low did not show up every single time. <clears throat> but yeah, so this is the kind of guy I wanted to have, like, two kind of styles. One where he would be able to be adept with a weapon, but at the same time be able to just go with a sweet kicking style as well, and Hayate became one of those. I also do have a character that is uh, also fixated on just kicking, so, he, and that's going to be like a newer gen character, not super newer gen, he's going to be like a part two character, which is basically going to be around the same kind of like architecture of like part one and part 1.5 and everything like that. So, it's just going to have like a more steampunk kind of vibe to it and everything. Ow. Oh no. But yeah, uh, don't mind me if I'm like also like, if you, if you can see, if you can hear like the not-so-goodness of my voice right now. But yeah, like I mentioned, we are going up against Kaijima and Hellspawn because the Kaijima Rebellion was incited by the Hellspawn and everything, who was uh, the main ringleader of that, who is not in this battle, known as Lucifer, who you have all seen already, or at least majority of you have, because I know we got a big influx in the channel and everything ever since uh, the Dynasty Warriors 9 review video. But, um... But yeah, so I think this would also be a cool way because the newer people would be able to see, like, my characters and everything. This is basically one of the main things that I had going on with the channel beforehand. Light, come on, bro. Don't die on me. Also, I gotta change his eyes. I, I don't know why they're pink. They should be blue. 
I ended up giving Light a bit of a re not not a, not a big redesign or anything, but like uh, a tweak. Here, actually, we'll do a Muso here so we can show it off. Oh, all right, dope. I guess it just didn't want to go through. <laughs> that's that's cool. All right, we'll try that again with this Muso instead. Is this man impervious to like taking damage or something? What's happening here? I don't think I can hit this man. Oh, well, Light's gone for now. This man can't get hit. Is this a glitch? I think the game glitched. Should we just ignore this man? I think we have to ignore this guy. All right. Well, I guess I got to go take a base before anything else happens because I can't hit the guy. That's crazy. But yeah, getting back onto the character. Um, so when it comes to Hayate, he is the more... Um, I wouldn't want to say he's just comic relief because he's not. He's, he's, like, he's a serious character and everything, and he has really cool serious moments. But he's the more uplifting kind of character out of all of them. We'll say that. He's the more up uplifting character. He, he gives a lot of comic relief and everything. Um, despite his not-so-great upbringing for uh, being orphaned, basically, since he can't remember. He doesn't remember his family at all. He doesn't remember if he had any parents or siblings. Obviously, he knows he had parents, obviously. Like, oh, I was born, so obviously I had a mom and dad at some point in my life. But he can't remember them at all because he lost them at such a, a young age. He has no idea... Even I don't know yet. I'm still contemplating that. But I do know that he was, like, orphaned and he doesn't know, like, if his parents are alive or not. <laughs> That's still what I'm working on as well. I'm not 100% certain. Because part of me is like, do I want to introduce, like, more characters into the story that already has a big influx of characters? Or should I just, like, just say, like, nope, nope, they're not, they're gone or you're just never going to see them or something like that. I'm still kind of contemplating that whole entire thing. But, yeah, he kind of just ended up living on his own ever since he was a, a young child. He has been like a miracle child, basically, being able to survive at a very young age all by himself. He ended up trying to learn how to um, steal, try to pickpocket, how to hunt. He basically tried to do whatever he could in order to try to make some small living in his life. So, not 100% different from what Haruna was, except unlike Haruna, like, unlike Haruna, Hayate had absolutely nobody to be with. Haruna ended up having uh, her little companion, Ichi, and uh, her older sister, Taroa, who will probably get her own video sometime down the line as well. But, um, Hayate at the beginning had absolutely nobody to be with. And he wasn't really hated or anything. He's a pure human, so he's not going to get as much hate as, like, someone like Haruna would if she, because she was, like, part Nitsu and everything, because Nitsu are not very liked in these parts. If any of you remember, uh, you OG fans, if any of you remember my Benita story, I kind of set the vibe for what that's going to be like in terms of, like, if you're a Nitsu. And for those of you who don't know what a Nitsu is because you're new to this channel, a Nitsu is a is going to be a character with animal-like features. So for, like, Harna, for instance, she has... Uh, she has, like, animal features, so she's got, like, the... She's part fox, so she is going to have, like, fox ears and fox tails. Uh, and then there's Benita, who basically set the vibe for that uh, whole kind of, like, beginning of the story. Uh, where she is part rabbit or part bunny because Benita, literally Banny, which is, um, I can't remember which language it is, but it's but it's meant to be for bunny. Uh, yeah, we can have people start moving out now. So, Hayate didn't really have to deal with any of that. He didn't, but he did obviously still get ridiculed and everything just for being, like, a petty thief in their eyes and everything, so obviously, regardless, he still did not get a very good rep. He was very hard for him as a child to make friends at all. He didn't get any kind of form of education, but he did learn how to fight all on his own and be able to realize that this man is immensely well when it comes to kicking the shit out of people. That is basically what he ended up learning all by himself. He's like, man, I can really use my feet. He was able to keep up with the swiftest of animals, and he was able to just knock them out or even kill them just by using his, his kicks alone. Then he ended up running into uh, someone who ended up using nunchucks and everything. I wanted to say it was for farming because nunchucks actually back in the day were used for farming. They are a farming utensil. And so he ended up playing around with it and then he ended up making that actually a weapon on his own. I still don't really know 100% if that's canon. I think that's actually a kind of cool way because it would also give the origin of the nunchuck and everything. Because it was used as a farming tool back in the day. As far as I was told. If not, then damn it, I'm an idiot. But I'm pretty confident it is. But, um... He, but but aside from that, he basically ended up seeing someone else end up using a nunchuck, and this boy wanted to be able to to use different methods in order to take out enemies or anyone else that just tried to get in his way. So he ended up trying to combine both the nunchuck and the um, his kicking style into one style, which is why hence we have the style of Guan Suo's with the nunchuck here right now. So 
They did have two styles, which was um, this and Link Tong, but Won Suo's style with the nunchucks fits it so much more. Because he's got so many more kicky styles with his EX attacks and everything, so I thought this would be perfect fit for Hayate. So eventually he did end up going into the... Oh yeah, by the way, I did make a name for my country finally with the one that Light and everyone else resides in, because I know I had a, like Jigoku already made before, and uh, Kuno was a bit more of a later kind of character. Not super late, because he was like when this game came out, basically. But, um... It was later in the year when this game came out when I ended up making her. So she's, she's technically one of the later characters, but she's still got her own country name and everything. But first I thought, in my opinion, was actually more easy to do. But um, this is but this country is now going to be called Seiki, which is Sanctuary. So I thought that would actually be a very cool... I think that I think it was that word. I, I, I'll brush it up and I'll let you know like in the editing if that actually is accurate. But uh, if my memory is correct, because... Okay, Again, bear with me because my mind is kind of like a little foggy today because I did not sleep well and I'm getting a little bit on the uh, allergetic side of things. And this room, for some reason, is not feeling super cool right now. The air's blowing. It's just not doing super great at its job right now. But I'm sure once I turn off like the recording stuff, it'll start cooling down again. I'll turn on some fans. But yeah, so... Yes, this place, this country is now going to be called Seiki, which is, if I'm not mistaken, is Sanctuary. And like I said, in the editing, I'll correct myself if I'm right or wrong. But yeah, he, ended up, he ends up going over to the area where Sin, his father Jean, and his mother Chiwa, and his, obviously his younger sister Chiyuski reside. And he ends up running into the little girl known as Chiyuski, who you can see right here, who I called is like the best friend you'll ever meet in your life because she has one of the most pure hearted your hearts, I mean, in my story. So, he ends up beating her, running into her. He has absolutely no idea. He doesn't keep up with any of this stuff in terms of, like, political crap or anything, so he doesn't even realize that this this chick, this girl here is like, oh, she's a really big deal because she's, like, the daughter of, like, the leader of this section of the country and everything. So, ow. So, um, he ends up befriending her without even thinking, because... When it comes to Hayate, if you get to know him, it's so easy for him to make friends and everything. And be able to um, have people like be drawn towards him and everything. So I had to let out that roar, even though that kind of hurt my throat. I shouldn't have done that. Uh, let's do a rage here. Why not? But, um, yeah, so... He ends up befriending her, and then eventually she's like, well, why don't you just, like, she, like, it's, it's so casual between the two, and that's the kind of relationship that they actually eventually have, because they do end up becoming a couple and everything, because, uh, Chiyuski ends up becoming that first person to accept Hayate for what he is, like, she understands, like, oh, so you're on your own, alright, that's cool, I understand why you do all this stuff, but, uh, why don't you come with me, and I'll give you more of a, maybe I'll try to convince my dad to give you more of a home, so you can, uh, try to, like, flush out your life and everything and make it even better for yourself. And that way you don't you can run the straight and narrow and not have to like worry about thieving or anything like that. So Hayate seeing an opportunity to be like, alright, I can I'm gonna get a home now. I'm probably maybe gonna have potentially family now. So Hayate goes and as they're walking he's like looking at all the small houses and everything like, oh these are really nice. And so as they're walking more towards uh like near the center of the of the uh area he notices that there's a giant keep slash castle and that's what they're walking more towards as they go on and Hayate's like what who is this chick and why if why are we walking towards the most biggest house here and now he starts to get nervous and everything and Hayate eventually walks into the house and realizes damn it this chick is a daughter to a like a ruler of this air to the ruler of this area this is not good because I'm a petty thief and if this guy higher up sees me, and probably, I've already probably made a name for myself in terms of stealing and everything, I'm screwed, because he's probably going to have me arrested and everything. So he ends up coming into this house with Yusuke very reluctantly, like she has to like tug him in like order to get him inside the house, or inside the castle or the main keep or whatever you want to call it. And then and ends up running in, into the father, Jean, uh, which is, like I said, her father and Sin's father. <clears throat> and eventually uh, gets a little rundown of who Hayate is, and he's very... Gene is a very brilliant man. He ends up, like, not really needing his own strategist on, like, scene who does. 
But um, so Gene's able to put two and two together and after knowing a little bit more about this boy. And he's like, oh, so this kid is the little petty thief that's been going around the country and stuff. But instead of like being, instead of like um, trying to like arrest him or like give him any kind of like like reprimanding or any kind of punishment, he's instead like you're a very, you seem to be a rare, very resourceful kind of kid. And it seems you've taken a real liking to my daughter here. So he ends up giving him a proposition, which is funny because it's also kind of the same as Harna, but not really the same. It's not su it's not super the same because this is before like the Kajima Rebellion actually happens because they're still really young at this point in the story with the backstory and everything. But yeah, so he ends up being like, I'll give you a proposition. I'll help you clean up your life. I'll, h I'll give you a home and all this stuff. If you can do one favor for me, and that is be... Use your talents in order to keep my daughter safe. So obviously Chiyuski's like, I'm independent, I can do this myself, I can take care of myself. But Jean obviously ignoring her because she can be a little reckless and Jean is very aware of that. So he ends up uh, asking Hayate if he wants to put his talents to use and uh, be a watcher for his, uh, his daughter, Chiyuski. And so Hayate realizing, all right, this man's asked, offering to help me flesh out my life helping me get on the straight and narrow like Chiyuski said, and all I have to do is protect his reckless daughter, I'm in. I'll do it. So, like, he's getting a home, he's getting a family and everything, and he's being able to be closer to this girl that he's kind of taken a liking to. So he's like, without hesitation, he's like, absolutely, I'll do it. So, in this instance, it's kind of like, yes, it's sad because he didn't really have a family to begin with, but it ends up showing, like, not everyone in Scene's bloodline, because if you all remember, I've mentioned Scene and everything in their bloodline. Their bloodline is not really the best of people. Like, their bloodline has a lot of bad people in it. Their, their bloodline has always had, like, some really cool people in it, but it ends up slowly, like, deteriorating once Gene and Scene come into the picture, and then they end up becoming more of a, like, more respectable kind of family instead of a more feared kind of family. They'll always have the intimidation factor in this in this E clan, which I have, which is E N E, and then they just have a letter in front of it. So they end up. So that's the kind of cool thing that I also like to showcase as well for the likes of Scene and also Gene as well. That like this is where like the bad rep that they're getting, like the, the more feared kind of rep that they're getting, ends up going away. Am I about to kill Lust here? If that's so, that's kind of unfortunate. Like, yep, I did. That is unfortunate. So I was hoping. Damn, I have to beat that ass. But yeah, so. All in all, all that ends up happening, and uh, he ends up being basically being part of the Chumong army, being a personal bodyguard for Chiyuski, and then eventually he ends up running into Light, who is with the Kaijima, not the Kaijima, excuse me, with um, the Kaizuku, which is the pirate army that his father, Azura, leads, who I also want to do a video on, because he, he's, he's another really cool character. And then he also ends up running into Suzaku, who is also part of a different army, and then he runs into Chen Shun, who is also in a different army, and then obviously he's already befriended Scene. The five of them end up coming together as one in the Kaijuma Rebellion and end up taking out the leader, who is Lust, of all people, who I just had show off on this uh, after I beat her ass. But yeah, so I kind of recreated that a little bit. So with the five of them, they were able to help defeat Lust and everything. And then um, they ended up all become, having like an oath with one another, like, well, we just went through this whole entire like campaign together and we took out the ringleader finally, so... Huzzah, let's, why don't we uh, make an oath? And Hayate is actually the one that makes that, like, gives that suggestion. Like, why don't we all just, like, have an oath with one another? Like, be oath brothers and all that stuff. So, eventually, Scene being the most reluctant because at this point, he's, like, very downgraded in his character development right now because he's kind of the cold, like, icy kind of guy that he is at the beginning. But um, eventually, all five of them uh, accept this idea, and then they all become brothers with one another. And then it all comes to play a big factor later on in the story with all five of them. And it's really cool. So Hayate is basically going to be, like I mentioned, he's going to be slight comic relief, but he's also a very serious kind of character. And I end up having him do a really cool moment where he has like a breakdown. And like, he just like ends up just like taking out so many people because some people are threatening Chiyuski and all that stuff. It's really cool. I really like uh, what I've been doing with Hayate. Like I mentioned, he's one of my oldest characters. And he's very much the bubbly, like, joyful kind of character. Despite having a not-so-great uh, life before meeting Gene, Scene, and uh, Chiyuski and all them, uh, he, despite having all that, he was able to stay strong and be able to be that super gutsy, cool, kind of, like, jokester kind of person of the group. 
And that's what makes, because characters like that, and that's why Karna is such a big character for me, because she kind of throws that same kind of background as well, where she becomes the most bubbly of the trio of, of the trio de mischief, which comprises of Light, Shine, and Harna. That's why, she, personally, she's my best girl. She's my favorite girl of all. I love her to death as well. And Hayate is basically up there in my favorite boys category as well. So, all right, guys. So, yeah, that's basically a rundown of Hayate. You got to see him in action. You got to see his kicking style and everything. And his nunchucks and all that stuff. Got a slight background, uh, backstory to him as well. I hope that was good enough for all of you. I know this was kind of different because I was in the middle of doing action. But it wasn't really anything super, super crazy. So, I thought, I'll just do it in that kind of video. And I'm not going to lie. Like, for me personally, when it came to showing off a character, because I know I haven't done it in a long time, sometimes it's either like, all right, I'm just trying to plan out this character. Uh, maybe do a backstory, full-fledged backstory bit of it, and maybe do a script. But at the same time, when I do scripts, when it comes to showcasing my characters, it's like, it's not me. I let, when it comes to showcasing my characters, I want to be able to, like, speak from the heart, be able to just talk, like, just talk how I've been talking this entire time. So, and that's why, at times, I'm kind of reluctant, because I like nerding out with my characters, but at the same time, I'm not even going to lie. Yes, I've been doing this for a hot minute. I'm doing this for over a year now. But I still end up getting kind of on the shy side when I go try to nerd out and it kind of like jumbles me up. But at the same time, this has also been a big like, all right, step out of your comfort zone kind of thing and just do that. So that's basically what I did here. So yeah, so this is also first off the heels of me bigly getting out of my comfort zone with a video you guys see on Friday with uh, the diversity with my friends and everything. So that kind of helped me because I kind of was still on the groove with that. But yeah, so. I'll just say right now, like, for people who want to be able to, like, show off their characters and everything, and, but are too nervous, and like I said, this is me stepping out of my comfort zone as well, because every time I, I showcase a character, because it's me nerding out and you guys are seeing, like, the real lighty, um, it's, it, you can get a little shy and you can get a little taken back by, like, by it a little bit and everything, but I'm just gonna say real quick, I don't know why I'm, like, doing, like, some kind of, like, lecture, like, kind of, like, cool lecture here to motivate you all, but I thought it would be kind of cool to do, but... If you guys ever have that kind of vibe, like, like especially for those of you in Discord, because I know a lot of you came into this because of my lore and everything, never hesitate to show off a character. Like, it, you're never gonna know how good it truly is unless you actually like go in there and do it yourself. Like, I know that's easier said than not. Trust me, I'm doing this. This is I'm this is coming from someone who's already doing this and stepping out of his comfort zone and was very reluctant to do this video, mainly because I'm just very like shy about the whole thing. But when it comes down to it, you got to eventually step out of that comfort zone, especially if you want to have a story and you want those characters to get out there, uh, regardless of whether or not they get uh, well-reviewed or not. Like, I've had a couple characters that I've shown off to artists and everything, and they're like, like, some things could be better, some things could be not as good, or, like, some things could be better, this thing isn't that great. Like, I've gotten that kind of criticism as well. But eventually you got to just step out of the comfort zone because it helps you grow. And you'll be able to get that great feed that feedback that, obviously, uh, you'll get from all those awesome people that are willing to listen in and see your care, you see your characters and everything, and give you feedback. So, you just you just gotta step out of that zone and be able to just showcase those characters. Yes, it's not easy to do. Trust me, I've been doing it for a year now. So yeah, it's it's not it's not easy. I'll, I'll be honest with you. But I personally just. I, I enjoy it because it ends up showing the real me and it, show, and it shows the hard work that I'm trying to put in for these characters in this story and obviously you guys have been enjoying it so that gives me all the more motivation and obviously if you guys have even if you guys just want one specific person obviously uh, a great opportunity for you guys to do it not a huge crowd or anything I mean hell there's a lot of people here who enjoy lore on my discord I like I'm, I'm willing to hold my hand out for you guys here and be able to do that so if you got I have like a CAC or an OC showcase section in my cha in my Discord. If you guys ever want to do that and get like feedback from any people, be by all means, hop in to the Discord. I'll give my own thoughts on it as well if you want it, or if you just want to just try to step out of that comfort zone and just just type it up and then just like leave it at that. You can do that as well. Like, I want to be able to help. Like, I I want to be able to help myself, but I, for me personally, I want to be able to help you all out as well. I want to be able to like, I want to give. It's a give and take kind of thing. Like, you guys are giving me. Um, you guys are giving me like all your awesome support and all that stuff and I want to be able to take that and give it back to you as well so that's kind of what I want to do even if you like feel very nervous like for me personally 
I started off with talking with one person, so if you have that one person, hell, I could even be that one person if you want me to. I don't care. Like, if you want to just specifically talk to me about a character and everything, I don't mind doing that. I want to be able to help you guys out as well, as much as you guys have been helping me out. So I want to say first and foremost, thank you so much for that. So, uh, I guess now that we got all the mushy crap out of the way, because that was, that was weird for me too, honestly. But nonetheless, I hope you all did enjoy the showcase for Hayate. I hope you all did, um, like the showcase that I did for him in terms of his action and his backstory. If you did, be sure to smash the like button right now. Comment down below your thoughts on the character, as always. And of course, if you're new to the channel and you like the content that you see, be, heard, be sure to hit that sub button. And like I said, if you want to help showcase off a character and everything, if you want a small audience, my Discord is wide open for you guys. The link is down in the description, and you and there's a section where you can show off your OCs, like CAC, CAWs, whatever the hell you want to call them. If you want feedback, or if you want just a specific person to do it, if you want me to be that specific person, like I said, drop in the Discord. Just go ahead and do it. Like I said, I'm here to help. There's a lot of amazing people in my Discord that are more than willing to give their feedback as well. So by all means. Go ahead and join if you want to. So with all that being said, guys, thank you all very much for watching. I'm sorry that speech was, speech was so long, but I really wanted to get that off my chest. But uh, I forgot my own outro. Regardless, thank you all very much for watching. I'll see you all in the next one. Farewell.